series was called Psychops. Psychops. Yep. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Don't yep. Worry about it. You're good. Since then, he's worked for every major publisher. So he's worked for DC, Marvel, Image, Dark Horse, Boom. Um, he did 50 consecutive painted covers for Shadow of the Bat. That's almost five years worth. Um, yeah. He's also done a, I mean, it, there's a huge list. Let's, just the highlights, Batman Beyond, Daredevil. I love that show. No, oh, yeah. Wait, the comics or the show? The comics. Uh, the comics. comics. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's the comics. So I guess good. He's done Birds of Prey, Catwoman, X-Men, Amazing Spider-Man. Um, Domino. Domino, yep. And then he's done. He's also done some co where he's been the co-creator on stuff like DC's Matador, Marvel's Domino. Um, he and I have worked on Gun Candy and the Ride together. Um, he's also done. Uh, did you ever see the Big Wednesdays comics? Uh, no. He did that. So you need to check that out. It's awesome. Oh, big cool. It's called Wednesdays Comics. Okay. Write that down. And he's also done probably my favorite issue of Jonah Hex. <laughs> so if you haven't nice. seen that, that's amazing. That was fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, first time being here, I don't really have really covered well. Oh, dude, but that's fine. Dude, if this was your tenth time coming here, yeah. you wouldn't be prepared. It's, it's just impossible to prepare yourself. Yeah, you can't prepare yourself for this. Part. It's impossible to prepare yourself for Comic Con. Just forget about it. Yeah. He's yeah. currently working on Daymen for Boom Studios. Day yep. D A Y M N. Oh wait, no, so I think it was the map. Batman, Damon, no, no, this is for Boom, and it's pretty cool yeah. too. It's got vampires and stuff in it. You can check that one out too. Yes. They've got plenty of stuff there too. He also teaches art classes at the Portfolio Institute, or Portfolio Center in Atlanta. Yeah. In Atlanta? So, yeah. Atlanta, Georgia. Is there another Atlanta? Hmm? Uh, yeah, I think there is. Is there? Yeah, that's weird. I know there's another Georgia. <laughs> Surprisingly, an entire country. What? <laughs> And, uh, and are you familiar with the character on Nightwing? The, uh, the, uh, yes. Um, I designed the character, uh, the costume for that character. Cool. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. Stay, yes, his co his costume design is kind of staple of the co of the co comic book world. Hmm? Yeah. Yes. Yes. And uh, and that uh, design has been used in the uh, Batman movies for you know uh, Robin. So everybody's here for the Brian Stelfreeze, My Adventures in Storytelling, right? All right. So you guys kind of missed the first introduction. You guys probably know everything Brian's already worked on. Yeah, but just to give you a quick doing. recap. Yep. <laughs> Brian's been working in the comic industry since the 1980s. He started out with a book called Psychops for David Anthony Craft's company. Since then, he's worked for every major publisher in the comic book industry. Um, probably one of his largest accomplishments is he did 50 straight consecutive painted covers for Shadow of the Bat. So that's, like I said earlier, that's almost five years worth of stuff. Yeah. Um, I even worked for Now Comics. He's even worked for Now Comics. Yeah. Did you ever work for First? Yeah. Yeah, First. First time. He can put some businesses out of business. <laughs> so. <laughs> what I've done, I am the closer. So I'm Doug Wagner, so I'm going to be the, the moderator for the panel. Um, so as you guys know, Brian's a special guest of the show. So as a special guest, you usually have to do a showcase panel. Um, Usually that'll be a retrospective of their careers, but Brian doesn't like to talk about himself. So we're gonna try something new today, a total experiment. He wanted to talk about storytelling. So hopefully you guys will have a good time with this. We're just gonna sit down and, and talk. Hopefully you guys will learn something from it. Yeah, and uh, at the same time, this is, a, this is a conversation between Doug and I because we, we've hung out, we've worked um, together on a, on a number of projects and, um, and we're both absolutely fascinated by storytelling. Um, we're fascinated by the medium of storytelling in comics. Um, we think uh, uh, comics has something very unique to offer uh, as far as being storytellers um, and being uh, artists, writers, and creators. So, um, so these are conversations that, um, that we generally have up until three, four, five o'clock at night because we're just so fascinated by the, uh, by the medium of comics. And if you guys are into comics, more than likely um, you're you know, into a lot of the same stuff that, uh, that we're into. And, uh, and especially for, um, he said that, uh, that he'd like to move into uh, possibly uh, writing for comics. Uh, a lot of times when you're hanging out on the outside looking in, you really don't get a chance to see what's, what's kind of happening uh, on, the, uh, on the back end of things. And we'll, we'll talk about a little, bit of, uh, a little bit of that stuff also. So, um, so if you're interested in comics, cool, hang out. If you're interested in, uh, in creating comics, cool, you know, hang out if you're interested in the union between writers and artists. That's kind of what we're what we're getting into. Um, like 
Doug said, I don't, I don't like talking about myself, I like talking about the work. Um, that's really uh, what I'm uh, all about. I don't even like posting pictures of myself. I'm really more about the work than I am about me. So let's start off with a really tough question. Uh, and, uh, and also, um, if you guys want to jump into the conversation, if you uh, have any questions or need any clarifications on anything that we uh, say up here, just definitely raise your hand or just throw something out there and uh, we'd be uh, more than happy to kind of jump in. I'm actually happy that it's just like you know, a handful of you guys. It's uh, a little bit easier to kind of like uh, maintain uh, things that way, so. So we've known each other for 20 years. Really? Yeah. And Funny, I'm 20. <laughs> <laughs> so we've, been, we've known each other as long as this guy's been alive. <laughs> um, when he was born, we <laughs> met. <laughs> He's the cat. Yes. Yes, we said, a child is born in England. <laughs> we should be together. We should be friends. <laughs> and prepare, prepare the world for this child coming to the San Diego Cup. <laughs> so this is all for you. What's your birthday? Oh, what, what's your birthday? Uh, 25th of Oh, I'm pretty sure that's the day we met. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you and I have, I don't think, ever had a conversation that eventually didn't go into storytelling. Yes. But I don't think we've ever defined storytelling. So if you had to define storytelling in comics, what would you say? Uh, oh, man, you have to start off with a tough one like yeah. that. Um, well, the, uh, the weird thing for me is, uh, it's, and, and I, I kind of hit on it earlier, I, I think uh, writing is one thing. When you're when you're writing and you're putting down beautiful words, that's that's one thing that's separate unto itself. And I think art is one thing that's separate unto itself. But I think how the two interact and how that moves the readers, uh, the readers' reaction to it, um, I think that is is storytelling, the, the craft of of communicating. Uh, and uh, I don't think the art is storytelling. I don't think the writing is storytelling. I think storytelling is another thing, and I honestly think storytelling is the real thing. Uh, I, think, um, I think writing and art are just tools to achieve storytelling, which is the real thing that we're, uh, we're striving for, getting, um, getting that synaptic leap, that, that thing to happen to the reader, where the reader sees and feels what's happening in a, in, in, in a story or in an event. So, um, so I'd say, you know, some people <coughs> call it uh, art, uh, I would call it storytelling. I think, I think storytelling is a separate thing from art. Hmm. That's interesting. Because I've always thought story, its real purpose was to evoke emotion. Yeah. And then when you say well, you're a storyteller, that means what you're trying to do is evoke an emotion yeah. by telling somebody a story. Yeah. Or showing somebody a story. Yeah. But, um, but, I, but I also think it's something even beyond. Um, there's, there's kind of a pet theory of mine um, which is that um, that because we're such a cerebral animal, um, uh, I've always kind of thought that uh, communication and storytelling is the most important. That like we don't have fur, we don't have claws, we don't have uh, all these other things that help other animals survive. What we have to help us survive is storytelling. Um, storytelling is is the thing that makes us able to do what lions and tigers and all these great animals do uh, because we have the ability to like if if the two of us were walking along and you know an alligator jumped out and ate you I could go back to my village and say you know, tell them the story of what happened when we were walking along and all of the members in my fa uh, in my village that listened to me and didn't go in that place where alligators were those people survived everyone else got eaten by alligators so all of those people survived because they reacted, they listened to storytelling. And you take this happening over and over and over and over and over again, uh, whereas, you know, a lion or a tiger might evolve, you know, speed or power or strength to deal with their natural world. I think we've evolved storytelling to deal with our natural world. And I think it's, it's, it even goes beyond evoking an emotion, uh, I think when it comes to storytelling, when a person starts to tell a story, 
we actually listen to that person on a survival instinct, on a survival level. We're like, what is this person telling me? Because this person is telling me something that I'm going to need to know in order to survive. If I don't listen to this person, I might die. Uh, I think that's how important the story becomes to us. And um, I also think that we've evolved to being a creature that actually accepts storytelling more than we accept reality. Um, and this is kind of sad to me, but like, even with 9-11, you know, these guys flew planes into buildings and killed themselves because of story. So they decided that story was more important than their lives and voluntarily killed themselves because of story. So that, that to me, kind of says that storytelling is like a massive foundation uh, to us. It's, it's, it's the most important thing to us. Um, so with storytelling, we can move people to do things that are beyond just their emotion, beyond making them feel happy or feel sad. Um, with story, you can actually change a person's life. You know, because I think it is one of the most important things to us. I think we've evolved that way. Hmm. I, I mean, that makes perfect sense because it's about knowledge and passing yeah. that knowledge on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. We're more knowledge-based creatures than we are physical creatures. Yeah. And and I, I do think um, when you look at genres of stories. Um, we call them genres, but I actually think that they're actually delivering a certain type of survival knowledge, survival information. Um, a love story, for example. Um, what you're saying in a love story is, here's what you need to do in order to have sex and have kids and therefore, you know, move your species along. Or if you don't this, if you don't do this, you will never find a mate and you will die alone. Yeah, but what about the thing uh, not in reality? Is it can, can it be considered like a metaphor? Like, um, Snow Like, um, but find someone gets like supernatural creatures that um, they could be considered something like something we can't control. Can't, can't be Meta controlled. metaphor. Metaphor is still the same thing. A metaphor is going to be uh, it's going to be attached to the human condition. It's going to be attached to the human condition, and it's going to not only be attached to the human condition going to be attached to survival. So you can do a story about vampires, and that story is going to be about vampires, but really that's about power. You know, or it could be about vampires, but really it's about sex. You know, so metaphor is still bringing it all the way back to these are the tools, these are the bits of information you're going to need to survive. And if you do not listen to the storyteller, you will die alone. You know, and that's that's like the, the big thing. So Back in the day, you know, the storytellers would get up on the rock and say, I'm going to tell this story, or the witch doctors, or, you know, the tribe leaders, or whatever. They would say this story, and they would fashion the story, like the Bible, for example, fashions all these stories of survival and stories of what you need to do to survive in these metaphoric tales. It's a lot easier. Like, if I, if I were to walk up to you and I were to say, hey, do this thing and you'll live, you'll kind of go, and move on. But if I tell you just this story that's really interesting and you're like, hmm, that's really cool, and in the end, the person dies or the person lives, that is gonna stick with you. You know, that's gonna stick with you and that might change the way that you, that might change, hey, dude, yeah, that might change your decisions you know, in, the, uh, in the future. So, I mean, it's, it's kind of cool. Um, I mean, there was, there was a woman that came up to me at a, um, at a show uh, and, you know, first of all, this woman was gorgeous. I mean, she was absolutely beautiful, absolutely hot. And she was just like, I want to thank you. And I was just like, okay, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and, and she, she pulled out a photo of herself, and she was large and in charge. And, uh, and she said, I used to look like this until... I saw this comic book and she pulled out the cover of this Catwoman comic book and the cover was ripped off of the book and everything and, uh, and she said, I saw this and I decided that's, you know, that is the most beautiful, the most sexy thing that I can imagine and I need to be like that. And I was just like, <laughs> and, uh, and she pinned this to her refrigerator and 
exercise and dieted and all this stuff and she wasn't quite there but man she was hot <laughs> but um but like the thing about it is is what's weird is is when i was sitting down drawing that book i was just like man this is just this is catwoman this is a woman who's like in control this is a woman who she's got all this and i'm like really emotionally putting all this stuff into it and, and from the sketch all the way to the finished piece every decision i made was a woman who's in control a woman who's got her stuff together she's sexy but it's not about sex it's really about her having control of everything this woman has got batman wrapped around her finger and here was this woman a year later coming to me and expressing all the stuff that I put into that book. So it's like that storytelling, you know, to me, it's like I put that out there. I put that bit of story out there and then she picked it up and ran with it. With a single image. Hmm? With a single image. Yeah. I was actually going to say something about um, how storytelling can be used as inspiration. As inspiration. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because in inspiration, what is inspiration but survival? You know, it's going to, it's going to, inspiration is information that you pick up and you go with that teaches you not only how to survive, but how to thrive. You know, you're in a bad situation, you're about to die, you're about to lose your home, you're about to whatever, but then you get a bit of inspiration. You know, and story is, story is that over and over again. I mean, yes, because I kind of experience the same thing. A character you know, a visual no one has never heard of called One Punch Man. He trained himself with a very simple, ex a very simple exercise of 100, 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, 100 squats, and a 10 he did that for three years, and he's become the most powerful superhero in the whole entire world. <laughs> in the, in the, in the, in the okay, I know, obviously, I'm, that kind of inspired me to want to get myself into better, better shape. Yeah. Obviously, because I'm not going to be, obviously doing that is not going to make me the world's strongest, man, strongest yeah. man, but it will make myself a better, a better form. Than but, that, but that's the effect. Mm -hmm. That is the story effect. That is the effect that the story had uh, on you, uh, is you being able to actually uh, read that story and going, oh wow, this is what I'm going to need to survive, or this is what I'm going to need to be better. And I like that story better because it's it was about, it, like you said, it's a story that says train. Yeah. It's not, some of the things about superheroes that I don't like is they just magically get their power. Yeah, I know. They don't train, they don't study, they don't become smarter. It's just, oh, I'm a superhero now. Except for Batman, at least with DC, you know what yeah. I mean? He had to, he went and trained for years and, you know, different martial arts and being a detective. Yeah, I think that's the reason why I think everyone likes Batman the most, because he had to train he had to train to get where he had to be, as unlike every other hero, he made Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well I mean the, the thing about it is, is is Superman is um like Batman is Batman is new money, Superman is old money. Um, <laughs> you know, Superman says, if you're born rich, hey, look, you're rich. You know, Batman says, Hey, you know, if you do the right things and you make investments and you sort of keep your stuff together and you discipline yourself, you will become this, you know? So it's, it's kind of, and I, I do think um, when you look at Stan Lee's creation of the characters, Stan Lee always had characters that really come down to the human condition. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of the Marvel characters uh, have that great popularity is because people can relate to them. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, it makes it tougher when you have, yeah, we've had this argument before about Superman. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's tougher for fans, I think, to to relate to Superman because he's born super. He doesn't actually have to do anything to be super. Yeah, yeah. I think I do understand what Superman is. He's supposed to be the inspiration for everyone, everyone should be, you know, the, the perfect be, hu perfect human being. But nobody can't be that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And he's the top one of the world there's no one here. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's just like, hey, I'm I'm to, I'm here to inspire you. You can't do this. Yes. You, you can never, ever have this. But hopefully, I've inspired you. you know. yeah. Yeah. So the now, ultimate American. Now I will fly. Yeah. The yeah. ultimate American inspiration: the perfect human being is from another planet. Yes. <laughs> yes. Reach. You know, that's uh, that's that's where it gets a, a little tricky. But uh, but but I, I think those are those, those, to me those are the grand aspects, the grand aspects of uh, of story. And, and storytelling is the craft of achieving that. Yeah. Um, you know, storytelling uses the tools of, of music, art, film, whatever, you know, to actually achieve that thing. So we've never ever talked about the fact that like we love a lot of the same stuff. Yeah. And we'll yeah. analyze movies and comics and everything else and talk about the people we really love. 
but I have no idea who you're, who you're influenced by. Like, who sent you down this path of storytelling? Like, who, who was your inspiration? Um, well, the wacky thing about it is, is I've, I've got like a ton of, uh, of like, uh, and again, you know, it's, it's, it's a Superman, uh, Batman thing. Um, like, I have a brother and he is just talented. I mean, this guy is just freakishly talented and he doesn't have to do anything. I mean, um, art is just a gift to him, you know? So the, the whole term of God-given talent, my brother has God-given talent because at one day, at one day God came down and anointed him with this talent oil and he's got it. Um, but I am like 10 months younger than him you know, my dad was on military leave. It just worked out that way. <laughs> so, 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 I, so, so, like, you know, so two months out of the year, we're the same age, you know, and he's freakishly talented, and I'm the other guy. Um, so, so there was a, for a while, you know, I realized that, oh, man, in order for me to do what he does, I have to work. You know, I have to really, you know, I'm not a naturally talented guy by any way shape. Um, so what I what I had to do was just really <coughs> study artwork, study how people do things, really try to figure out, you know, how it's done. Um, and um, so so to a certain extent my brother was probably the biggest um, you know, influence on me because I could see him just do something so easy and I'd go, okay, I need to mathematically figure out how to achieve that. And uh, and that same thing that I applied to growing up with my brother. I was able to then start to apply to other artists that um, I'd look at their work. And again, it's that, that inspiration. I'd look at their work and there'd be something about their work that just struck me. And I'm like, wow, what is that thing? What, what is it that they're, that they're able to achieve? What is it that they're able to do? Let me try to figure it out. And, um, and uh, early guys were, um, were like, my mom got these um, uh, encyclopedia, uh, like I think Britannica or something like that. And then there was like, a storybook set that came along with it. And there were just all these illustrations by um, J.C. Leyendecker, um, you know, N.C. Wyatt, you know, all of the classic illustrators. And again, you know, I'm blown away by my brother. And then I see these guys and I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> you know? You know, it's, it's, it's like, you know, walking up a hill and finally getting up to the top of that hill and going, yes, I made it. And then looking up and seeing Everest. <laughs> and kind of going, oh no, I haven't even started. So, um, so, you know, the whole thing was uh, was going from my brother to then looking at these illustrators and, and, and chasing them. And, um, and I think somewhere along the way, uh, when I went to art school, I, um, I had to get one of those jobs you have while you're in art school. And I worked at a movie theater. Um, as an usher sharing tickets. So I got to see movies for free for, um, for the, uh, the year that I was in art school. And, uh, and that thing, that like, that thing that hits you when you see a piece of art where you're like, oh, wow, oh, man. You know, and it's, you're just completely moved by it. I noticed that I got that same thing when I looked at movies, you know, when I watched movies. And, and you know, 19, you know, 82, the best year in movies ever. <laughs> you know, um, that's a fact. That's not the yeah, thing. Yes, that, that's, it's a fact. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, 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 I'm, it's, not, I'm not entirely sure because I'm not a second movie critic, and my favorite mm -hmm. director is just Ed, Ed, Edgar Wright because I really like the, his stuff with Simon Peck and Nick. Oh, his stuff is just it's unarguably good stuff, but 1982. He was uh, born. Yeah, yeah, that was that was that was a year that I really got seriously into movies, and um, and those that that was the year that all the best movies were produced, and um, and what was uh, what was really cool was um, was that thing. I was just like, man, they, movies had that thing too. Um, so I really started um, studying film uh, and, and filmmaking. Um, so so pretty early on, I had this connection between uh, film and movies and just really kind of realizing that storytelling. Was, was the thing that they had in common. And the thing that was inspiring me about uh, the art wasn't necessarily the paint or the ink or any of the stuff, but it was like it was the storytelling. Hmm. And how did you get from that? Like, you were obviously, you know, when you say linebacker, I'm thinking single images. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, and then you talk about movies. 
and I can kind of see where there would be a parallel, but like, how did that lead you to comics? Oh, things? well, the, um, the, uh, the tricky thing is when I, when I lived, uh, my, my dad was military, so, um, so we lived all over the uh, United States. Um, but when I lived in uh, West Point, New York, um, there's some buddies of mine, we're all into comics, and that was, that's where my comic geekdom was born. So, um, so we all would go to the comic book shop and pick up comics and trade comics. So I was really into comics. For, uh, for like three solid years. And then we moved back to uh, South Carolina um, and it was like coastal South Carolina. There wasn't a comic book shop for miles around. Um, so I moved out of comics and got into um, doing illustration. And I worked for a newspaper for a while. And then I finally like came to Atlanta to art school. And you know, just kind of to a certain extent almost forgot about comics. Uh, and then some buddies of mine uh, were coming to the um, Atlanta Fantasy Fair um, that I knew up in New York. And they called me and they were like, hey, Brian, we're in town, you know, hadn't seen each other. And I'm like, well, what are you doing? And they're like, we're going to a comic book con convention. And I'm like, what the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what a comic book convention is. And, uh, and they came down and I went to um, the uh, Fantasy Fair with them. And again, that same bolt of lightning, I was just like, this is it. And to me, the cool thing about comics was comics was 